Hi, this is Dr. Nick. I'm the incrementalist here with Incremental Insights for better business, better health. And this is Fred Goldstein with Accountable Health. I'm here helping companies with their population health improvement programs, including how to reopen and operate during the COVID pandemic. So Nick, travel has been an interesting area for this entire pandemic. It's up, it's down. Here's the rule here. Here's the rule there. What do we do? So where are we with travel now? Well, let's, uh, first of all, let's talk about volumes because I think the big surprise, and I've got a little bit of extra insight into this, the volume of travel is somewhere of the order of 80 to 90% pre-COVID, which is astounding. <laughs> um, I, uh, that's US travel. I don't know about international. And actually, specifically on international, that is all, not all, but the majority of it is domestic with all sorts of new routes being uh, launched by the domestic carriers that are going all around the United States to uh, vacation destinations and so forth. Um, but the international travel has been exceptionally difficult. And, um, you know, there were certain countries that went in just off the charts in terms of pricing. Australia was one. I heard one way tickets to Australia were running at about 20,000 in the economy. <laughs> which I, I just I can't even imagine. And it was all about availability. Uh, the flights weren't there. But as of today, the United States has opened its borders uh, to international travelers coming in who have been vaccinated, which is excellent news because that means that we now start to see a little bit more opening. You've had the potential to travel if you had residency in other countries, if you had the privilege of multinationality, multi-residency, uh, which I do, and we've certainly traveled. Um, that wasn't quite true. Canada was different. I know you traveled, so maybe you can talk about that. The one important point to note here is that it's not open season. So it's not, I have a vaccination certificate, you're allowed in. You have a vaccination certificate you're allowed in with an additional test that you and I both experienced coming back into the United States you have to have within the three day window prior to your travel. Yeah, let's talk about that, Nick, without really, we're not here to sell stuff or talk about various companies, et cetera, and their products. But it was interesting because you were the one who turned me on to this and I had a pretty good experience with it. So why don't you talk a little bit about that testing service and coming back and how it differs from some of the other things? I, I gotta say it was super convenient, nothing worse than showing up in a country, who knows, what the services are, what the wait lines are, whether you're isolated, you know, you could go into, I think the United Kingdom and you had to get some tests and you had to pre-book it, you had to find it, did you know where it was? You're not allowed to leave your hotel room or wherever you're isolating, maybe you were allowed for all sorts of complexity. This service from eMed, which is a US-based company, essentially used the Binax now, um, you know, twirl through your nose experience, but it was all done over the internet with a uh, certified provider, so it's some form of a clinician who watches you through an interaction that was essentially through a web page on my phone. They watch it, they confirm who you are, you already register with your driver's license. Before you go, it's all set up, you have an app, and then you wait 15 minutes, they look at the um, results of the um, uh, test with the lines and say, you are hopefully negative as you and I both work as we're back in the United States. <laughs> or if you're positive, then you get a positive result. But um, uh, it was all done over the web and uh, in the comfort of my own home. The only thing I needed was a decent internet connection and uh, a mobile phone and obviously ordering the test beforehand. Yeah, and to add to that, I mean, it was great that you found it. We had, 12 of us go to Canada and had to do tests coming back. And I checked with my sister, who's a physician in Canada, and it was gonna be about $130 to run the test. And you had to run it through, you know, it took a couple of days, it was one of those PCRs, it wasn't rapid. And I know just going up there, finding tests was really difficult I, because I wasn't sure they'd come back in time. It's a nerve wracking experience. We all talked about it, my mother, my brothers and sisters and cousins and niece and nephews. But then what happened was we get that box and we all went to different hotel rooms. We had six and one room and five and the other the family members and then myself and some others and we all ran these rapid tests all at once within about an hour 
we had 12 of us done, you know, we had to walk some of the elderly folks through how to do the various internet things. But at the end of the day, you're right, it was on my app, went to the airport, opened that thing up, here it is, I could print off the email, it was a great experience, extremely pleased with it. And I wish we could set up systems like that for outbound as well. Yeah, I, I, and you know, you bring up an interesting point, the stress. So the stress with the PCR that goes, you know, if you did it in country, you go to some place and then can be 24 hours, can be more in fact. This is 15 minutes of stress where you're going, am I or am I not positive? That was essentially the experience. And actually pretty early on, I could say within probably the first few minutes, I could tell whether I was going to be positive or negative. It's it's very like a pregnancy test. It has this uh, uh, lateral flow experience in a line that appears or doesn't appear, and there's a control line. Uh, it, it was, aside from the waiting and the concern, I could be positive. I mean, there's always that potential. Um, it was an excellent experience and low cost. I know lots of people that did multiple tests. I think even you because you weren't sure that they would be available in time for you to be able to exit and have your necessary tests for travel. That's exactly right. So going to Canada, I actually tested within the 72 hour window, which is Canada's requirement versus three days for US. And I tested at a CVS. And then the next morning when I was in Denver, I found one at the airport that would do a test. And the Denver airport one turned faster than the CVS one. It was about 24 hours. The CVS was over 48. I know that some of the places were saying three to five days for a turn. Well, that's not going to do it if you're trying to travel outbound into some of these countries. The other thing that stunned me with that test kit was how rapidly somebody came onto the internet when I selected I'm ready to do my test. I mean, how many people are doing these? We had a group of us, but it was just a few minutes max for anybody to get an actual person on to observe that test. Very well done. That's exactly right. And I think it's important. They did have some initial problems because they got volume that they couldn't account for. They've obviously done a good sort of flexible uh, scheduling approach. It was uh, truly flawless very low cost in my experience and it was one test i mean i had a block of them i took some spares just in case one was you know damaged or whatever um but it was an extraordinary so if you're traveling certainly coming into the us that would be the way that i would go or returning to the us absolutely so once again a fantastic week nick this is fred goldstein with accountable health if you'd like more information or to reach out to us please go to accountablehealthllc.com and this is Dr. Nick. I'm the Incrementalist here with Incremental Insights for better business, better health.